we all come from different places, like different planets, different originations. Some, some did originate of this earth, right? And the, the thing is, is what comes after that? I don't know. So yes, I'm from another planet, but how did that source originate, right? Like this, I think people, people want to keep the universe so small. The universe is massive. We have no freaking idea how massive this is and what it is. Within the universe, there are all these different galaxies and we're experiencing this physical existence potentially from another physical existence, just like an avatar. The second that they, they get snapped out of that body, they're right back in their physical being. It's no different to that. Lynn, welcome to Shifting Dimensions. It's so good to have you here. I know that we spoke on the Award to the Wise podcast, which is the other podcast that I work on, but I had to have you back on Shifting Dimensions because I really wanted to learn more about your near-death experiences and some of the insights you got from those experiences. Great. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk about this. Yeah. So if I'm understanding correctly, you had two near-death experiences. Is that correct? I mean, technically there were a few more and I had a couple when I was a baby, but the two that really were prominent in my life were when I was older in my 20s. So I count those because I can actually, you know, re remember them. Yeah. Do you mind walking us through those experiences and, and what they were like for you? Yeah. I mean, if you, if you want to dive into any specifics, let me know. Um, I think it is important to know first that I had a a journey that was pretty tumultuous. You know, when I was one in three, I had pneumonia as a baby. And those were my first really two near-death experiences that brought me into, I, I want to say those are the reasons that I have psychic abilities and I am able to know things without, you know, thinking about it. When I meet a person, I know things that I don't really actually care to know and I'm a prophetic dreamer. And I think those things stemmed from the two when I was a baby. And I had a rough upbringing as far as I was constantly sick, chronically ill. I had asthma my entire childhood and teens. I grew up with an alcoholic father. The majority of my family died before I was 15. And the rest followed soon after. And it, it was just this cascade of things and, and endometriosis and depression and hormone issues just across the board, it was this buildup to really showing me that my body was out of balance. There was something wrong. And so that really culminated to my first near-death experience where I was really sick. Like all of a sudden, everything that I had experienced in life just kind of culminated and my body just couldn't handle it anymore. And my organs were shutting down. And I ended up with gallstones that backed into my bile ducts. And they, when that happens, you really, a lot's not functioning. And so everything just kind of shut, started shutting down. And at the same time, my partner at the time was diagnosed with colon cancer, which was the same cancer that my mom died of. So we ended up having to go our separate ways because she had to go be taken care of by her family because I had to take care of myself. I didn't have any family at that point. And so I had to really just take care of myself and I had to make that decision. And in that time, I remember feeling that the biggest thing that I remember having trouble with that the idea of dying was my dogs. They were what I had left in my life and they meant everything to me. They still do. And I remember always just holding on to this. Okay. But if I die, what's going to happen to my dogs? Is someone going to know about them? Or are they just going to be stuck here in the house and not having anyone to take care of them? And I was always afraid of that. Right. And that was like the only fear that I had. That was literally the only fear. And one day I was at the lowest. It was the, it was the day that I had the experience and I was laying in bed and I just had this like extreme pain running through my body and I was like, I think I need to drink some water. And I remember getting up out of bed and I was crawling to the kitchen. Like it literally took me 15 minutes to get like 10 feet. And I just kept kind of passing out along the way. And I eventually got to the kitchen and I drank some water and I made it back to my bed. And in that moment, my dogs who were not allowed in my room, they, I had this boundary that I had set 
they came into the room and they laid right beside me. They never did that in like the eight plus years. Right. And, and I knew like, I was like, oh, something's up. And when I laid down, I fell into the deepest sense of peace that I can describe. It was all of a sudden, I was no longer afraid of if they were going to be taken care of. And I knew that I could let go. Like all of a sudden, I just, the sense of peace that I, you can't put words to it. It's like all of a sudden, you're just not afraid of anything. And you you feel the sense of relief, re release. And so I'm there and I'm all of a sudden, I'm just no longer present with my external surroundings. And I'm in, in this internal space where these two guides come to me. And these guides were Native American, which was a really profound thing to me because I had always had a really deep connection with Native American culture. I mean, drums, the Native American drumming is one thing that can take me into a trance immediately. And I always wondered why I had this really profound connection to it. And sure enough, these two guides who come to me were Native American, and they showed me that I had so many past lives in the Native American culture. And that's why I'm drawn to certain areas around the world, because I had been there before. But more importantly, they they showed me, they, they came and they said, no, you can't leave. <laughs> it's not time. You need to do what, what, whatever they were telling me to do, they told me exactly what I needed to do to get better. And the funny thing is it was what my partner had tried telling me to do at the time. And I just had such a big ego around what they were trying to tell me to do. Cause I didn't want to do it because it was just, it seemed like a lot. And, and they're like, you need to do what Bonnie told you. Like what she was telling you to do was a specific guide and that was a guidance coming through and you need to go back in and do this. We're going to give you the energy and you need to go back and do this. And all of a sudden I'm back in and I'm in my room and I'm looking around and my dogs are still right beside me and they're very still like right next to me. And I look and I feel my body and I'm like, I don't have pain right now. Like I haven't, I had months of this pain and all of a sudden I don't have it. And so I'm like, wow, let me get up and do what they told me to do. And I'm not going to go into the, the medical aspects of what I had to do in order to get better, but it was, it entailed me taking care of my body and doing something specific. And I ended up passing liver flukes, the size, like they were an inch and a half long. And I don't know if you know, liver flukes are parasites basically that look like, I, I don't even know. They look like aliens. And my liver had been so full of liver flukes because everything had been shutting down. So it was like the perfect environment for everything to just kind of grow inside my body. And after I started doing the, the, whatever you call it, the thing that they told me, I was passing liver flukes and gallstones and just purging my body. And I had grown like patches on my skin, liver patches and dark spots everywhere on my face. And they started going away within three weeks of doing this. And wow, and yeah. And so that was the beginning of me getting better. Right. And there had been moments where throughout the, until the next near death experience, there had been moments of dropping back in close to that space because I wasn't ready to like actually step into the regular aspects of my life. I still was on this like deep healing <laughs> and purging that my body needed. And so that was the first one though. It was the, I think a big thing that I should actually talk about is during that experience, I did see earth from the outside perspective. And I want you to let me know how deep you want me to get into this because I can talk about where you can I'm get deep. You okay. can get deep. Okay. So <sighs> I, I guess the way to start this is the best way that I can describe in our terms, what we're actually experiencing is similar to Avatar. Avatar got it so close that it's, it makes me wonder who had their own near death experience and brought that back and said, oh, I'm going to make a movie and it's going to be exactly what we're experiencing because it's identical to what avatar portrayed and within that 
go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I just want to, um, this is so good. I'm eating up all of the words because this is very fascinating. Just to make sure I understand. So Avatar, the blue alien movie and Correct. how the people from Earth are able to get into an avatar or the body of the blue alien and become the blue alien. They can transfer their spirit and consciousness into the body of the exactly. of the avatar. That's what you're referring to. Correct. Yes. So basically the body is the shell and you're projecting and you're experiencing through the, the body. Right. Wow. And so in this, I'm taken up and I'm going to go in, in depth here. I'm taking up and I'm actually on a spaceship. So it's, it, it, I guess that's the best word that you can describe. It's like a spaceship in the terms that we use. And I'm looking out the window and they're doing this healing on me and it's green light and they're just running this green light over me. And I'm looking at earth and it looked dingy. It was brown. It looked sick. It looked like it was dying. Right. And I, I ask them, I, I turn to these beings and I say, does this mean that I have to go back? And they said, yes, you have to go back. This is why you're here. And I'm like, okay. And I didn't, I didn't bite it. I wasn't, you know, I just like, okay. And so then that's when I came back, obviously, but the experience of getting to see this really, really set into me when I watched a movie called Astral City. And Astral City is a movie that they made based off of the documentary of the first well-known psychic named Chico Xavier. And if you research Chico Xavier, when you look at a picture of him, it's like they forgot to change his body. <laughs> he looked like an alien walking on this planet. His eyes were so bizarre that he had to wear glasses because people had a hard time looking at him. And he was the first medium where he would come back with messages from people who had passed and people would be like, sitting there at the table and he'd like your mom's name was Mary and she's saying xyz and people were just like blown away right and that was when it really started like taking off and understanding that there are people who have these abilities and his story evolved and he ended up channeling beings from this other planet and it's obviously there are we're in this universe where the small speck on this this little dot right in this grand scheme of life and so he's channeling this being from another planet and he's getting all of this information about what it is and they made a movie based off of this channeling well after I had that experience and where they took me and the healing that they did I found out about this movie it just kind of came to my awareness and it had been filmed probably 11 years before I had my experience and where they take this person in, in this in this movie, where they take this person after he dies was identical to where I was taken. It was literally the same setup, the same room, the same healing energy. Everything about it was just like mind blowing because it was this like, all of a sudden I realized I'm not the only one who saw this, who, who's gotten to see this and has been able to speak about it. Right. And so it was just like this moment of, wow, because even for myself, my near death experience was just kind of like, okay, cool. Like it was my experience. You know, I didn't, I didn't really think anything too much of it because I remember when my mom died, when I was 15 years old and I was driving home with my grandpa and I had my head out the window while we were driving, uh, there was a spaceship that came down to eyesight level. And it was right, right in front of me. And I'm like, okay, I didn't think anything of it. Like it was just myself experiencing my reality, my personal own reality that I, I came from. And so I see this spaceship and all of a sudden it shoots off to the left and up really quickly. And I'm able to follow it with precision. And then it shoots over to the right and I'm just watching it. And then it comes down in front of me and it comes closer forward. And I hear my mom say, I'm okay, I'm home. And at 15 years old, you would think that that would shock someone, right? Like, what did I, I literally didn't even bat an eye. I just like, it's like, okay, 
Like, thank you for letting me know is really what it felt like. And so when I had my own experience, it, I remembered like, oh yeah, like this is what, you know, I experienced my mom coming to me and my mom and I, through more experiences, I realized that she is a soul connection. She wasn't just someone from, you know, from this physical reality. We actually originated from the same place and we have a big connection. And um, when I had that, like it didn't, it, I was curious. I was like, why are we on a spaceship? Like, that was my biggest question. I was like, why are we? And they told me because we had destroyed, our planet had been destroyed, much like we were on course to do with Earth. And that kind of blew my mind. And I was like, wow. So we don't get to like, actually my, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> that's, I don't have words for it, right? Like, it's just my home place. We don't get to be on the planet, uh, on that planet that we originated from as often because it was destroyed. We go back there and we can like start cultivating more on it, but we're, that's not where we live. And so all of a sudden I was just like, wow, it made me think of that movie Wally -E and how earth beings end up living in a spaceship because they destroyed earth. It's a repeat. And that's why earth is a school for us to learn how to evolve as beings and stop doing this, you know, this vicious cycle of destroying places. And we're doing great. We're actually doing better. And the reason I say that is because my near, my second near death experience I got to see earth again, and I got to see that it was doing better. It was brighter. It was greener. It was actually healing. And so same thing. I asked them, does that mean I have to go back? And they said, yes, you still have to go back, you know? And I think that's, that was one of the biggest profound things is I didn't really want to come back. Like, it wasn't like, I felt like, oh, I'm so excited to come back. I, I honestly didn't want to, I, I, I had to ask, like, does that mean I have to? But the second time I had a ruptured appendix and I let it go an entire day before going to the hospital. And that was, I had peritonitis all over. And when I finally got to the hospital, one of the doctors, she's like, I was scaring her because it's like, okay, I was like, I'm going to wait for the surgery. And the male doctor, he's like, okay, he's like, I'm going to come back in and check on you within an hour and see if you've changed your mind yet. When they came back in, the woman, she's like, Lynn, she's like, you're about to die. And I really would like for you to have this. And I was like, I know, but that's okay. And I was just like, so again, I slip into that space. Here comes that sense of peace. Watch over me. And that's when I had that, the second experience. And they're like, nope, like not yet. And they told me, you're going to be okay. Just have the surgery. It's going to be fine. You know, and it's because I had been so scared to have the surgery because I going under, like, that was a scary part. But then when I slipped back into that sense of peace, it's just like, oh, it doesn't matter. You guys can take me in. And the, the beautiful thing in that moment was when I was being willed in and I was in that, in that sense of peace after I had already had my experience with the external world, whatever you want to call it. Um, the people who are standing around my hospital bed, there are seven of them. And I see them all, they're called earth angels. They were there specifically for me. It was, it had to be specific people standing around my bed who were taking me into the surgery. And when I look at them, I'm looking at them and I'm just smiling and I'm in awe because I'm seeing them in a way that they're never going to see themselves, you know? And it was just, I, I had this gratitude of just like, if you guys knew how important you were to my existence right now. Like it, it's, it was such a profound beauty that was just coming off of these beings. And they, they showed me, you have earth angels in this life. They step in for a second, they take care of you and then they move on, you know? And it was, that was beautiful. And I see you have a question. So just go ahead and hop in. I'm listening to your story and I'm eager to ask, cause you mentioned the concept of where you originated from and the spaceship, are you a starseed? I, I hear that term a lot, not 100% sure what it means. So I want to ask you, if are you a starseed? And if you are, what does it mean to be a starseed? Yes. Yeah, so in, for lack of better terms, yes. I, 
we don't call it anything of that sort, right? Humans just have to give names to things so it makes them feel better about what they're experiencing. So the term starseed is basically a being who comes from another planet to aid Earth and Earth beings into growing and evolving and doing better for the world, right? So there are people whose souls do originate of Earth. And they're they're considered like the how do I say this without it sounding demeaning? Because it's not a, a lower than. They're younger souls, right? And they're the ones who are barely learning how to take care of themselves in this life and understanding what it means to be a human versus there are some people who come in and they know they've done this time and time again. They have this concept of um, self. They know how to move through life. They're, they share. They're educators. They're they're here to teach people, right? And that is where we come from. And there's different there's different places. It's not just this one planet that we stand from. There are multiple galaxies where beings come from. And it, it's so funny because we think about how many galaxies are out there and how many other actual planets are like Earth, right? And are inhabiting other beings, even very similar to our lifestyle, like as far as having the human shell. And we have human, like I shouldn't say human, we have shells where I'm from. Like when I go back, I'm still in a a body that experiences, right? It's not like, yes, there are some that are just energetic based and there are some, but there are other places where we're still experiencing physical existence of a sort. Um, we just tap into the energetic aspects a lot more in other places. And that's how you know the beings here where they're tapped into that energy source, where they understand the, that we're vibration, that we, you know, there's this sense of knowing of this higher power that's not just in the human body. And so, yes, call it a star seed, call it just another a galactic being, whatever you want, but it's just beings who came here to aid the growth and evolution of earth. Do you know the name of where you originated from? Because I know people talk about so many different planetary systems. Do you know where you originated from? So there are actually, yes, partially. The best way to describe this is there are some of us who are actually at the core of several. So Andromeda was my home galaxy, which makes like the fact that I'm a very androgynous person was kind of like this baffling thing to find out. I was like, oh my God, it makes so much sense all of a sudden. But there's also like the Syrian and the Pleiades. There is a group of us. It's not the a big group, but there's a group of us who are actually part of all of these galaxies. Like we we have spent time in all of these. So there's some who they come just from like they're Syrians or they are Pleiadians. And there are some of us who we have spent many lifetimes in all of these different areas and they didn't give me a name for it, but it's, we're basically like the council. Like I've actually in, in the last one that I had, I was part of the council. I was at the table and they were asking me like, do you feel like things are moving forward? Do you see things moving forward? And I was part of the council and that made more sense to me the second time coming back. And the second time I came back, I had so much more awareness of what earth was and what was actually happening. And it, it shifted my trajectory big time. Like it pulled me out of all the games that humans play, like the politics and the you versus me and all of these different things that people find to be against each other. I no longer was programmed to that. Because it just, I, I got to see it from the outsider's perspective and how this was created to keep division. The more people fight about these things, the more it's just going to be destructive, right? And so all of a sudden, like, I came back and I was like, oh my God, I can't look at the world the same anymore. And it was really profound. But um, yeah, it's just, there's different levels of where people come from. Okay, so I have I have two questions, right? The, the first one, because I want to ask about the council. and But the first question I want to ask is, so when you, you coming and originating from a different planetary system, a different galaxy, right? If you 
passed from this physical body that you're currently in. You're having this human experience, but you've lived lives in different galaxies. So when you pass, would you be going back to those galaxies or would you be going to a place called heaven where all the souls are? Because for me, sometimes you're shaking your head. No. Okay. So, cause for me, I get a little, I guess I need to learn more, right? Because I think about God, the source, creating all these different souls. And then we talk about soul origination. So how does that, so when we pass, are we going back to the source? Are we going back to God or are we going off into different parts of the universe where we're originally from? Does that make sense? So heaven and hell are a man-made construct and it's actually a mentality. It's not a place. You get to go to heaven or hell every single day with your thoughts. What you're thinking, what you're creating, those are heaven and hell in terms because humans have to put words to things, right? And so they they try to understand things by creating words and they feel better when they can add a, a being to it, right? And so God is an inside source. It is literally our creator of who we are co-creating with. It is an internal aspect of ourselves that is in creation, right? And so when we, when we think about heaven, we're thinking about the beauty. We're thinking about all things light. We're thinking about all things that are healthy and beneficial for us. It's hard to put this into words because again, it's just our human ego that needs the understanding of it. But the the best way that I can describe it is when you look, there's actually a way to depict the Bible, which I love because the Bible has so much gold in it. And if people knew how to actually bring out the gold instead of searching for what they want to feed their ego and believe like, oh, well, I'm going to take these things and believe this because this is what resonates with my ego, right? Instead of actually seeing like the beauty is God is creation, And we are the creators of our own reality. And so therefore, when we are tapping into God's source, we are tapping into our higher self. We are in creation with our higher self, which is God, right? And that is why no one is separate from God, because God is everything. God is our internal space. God is your internal space. It's mine. It's ours. It's everyone's. And so we are this network. We're just its like the best way that I can give you a visual is think about the neurological network. When you think about our brain and you look at the neurological network, you you see the internal pictures of it. It's this web of life, right? It's this big creation and things are lighting up all over the place. And when you have a certain thought that that neuron lights up, we're the same thing. We are this network of energy. And when we feed certain aspects of ourselves and the world, those things light up. And when you feed negative things, those things are still going to light up. But when you pull your energy away from the negative, those things start to die off and then you reprogram them and new neurons start to, to light up, right? It's the same thing with humans. We're all this, we're this network that stems from this one source energy. And we're either using the the good energy, we're using heaven, if you will, or we're using hell. And either way, we're creating new neurons all over the place and it's up to us to turn those on and off and to let go of the old outdated negative ones that are continuing to just continue to repopulate all of the negative things, or we continue to grow. And those are what heaven and hell depicts. It's like the words are just for humans to understand, but we, we take into context so much more than what it actually means. If we were to drop into that space and if you were to have into your your near-death experience, you're communicating without actually verbalizing. It's an energy form. We are no different here on this planet. We just complicate things with words because we want to express ourselves and our beliefs through language instead of really actually tapping into the energy of it. And this is why things get so convoluted because... Everyone has these different beliefs, but beliefs are only because we grew up being told a certain thing. It's when you tap into source energy, this 
all that is energy, the I am, the I am, whether it's written in Sanskrit or in the Bible or anything across the nation, the I am is the original source. It is all that is. When you stop and you realize I am without putting anything behind that, you are literally just source energy. There's nothing attached to it. It's not, I am female. I am this. I am this writer. I'm whatever. You're no longer attaching anything to that. And so that I am source is the creation of all. And what you put after that is what you are creating, right? And so there are so many people out there who are creating with their words and they're only creating because of what they were raised to believe. Those beliefs were just passed on time and time again. And the reality is everything is passed on. What our parents teach us is because they were taught that. What they were taught was passed on from their generations before, right? The only truth is the original I am source. And it, it's hard. It's so funny because it's really hard to put it into words when I can feel it, when I know the feeling, when I know what it means to just be me. And I don't need to change anyone else in this world. I need to be my own guide, my own God, my own creator. I am tapped into that essence of myself, right? And so now when I see other people living their own lives, I remember that they are their own creator and they are the creation of their reality. And it's not for me to decide who, what they should or should not believe or do or feel because that comes in their own time. And that's why you see certain people end up having these epiphanies after they die, have a near-death experience or or they have an incident happen in their life where all of a sudden they realize like, oh my God, like I only believe this because this is what I was taught. We have to unlearn so much in this life. We don't need to learn as much as we think we do. We need to unlearn all of the things that were passed down to us and get back to the source of creation and the source of vibration and living from that space of vibration instead of living from the space of external media and people around us and all of these things that are telling us what to believe. Even myself, I make sure that when I'm doing my courses or I'm teaching people something, don't just take on what I say, find your own truth, right? Understand who you are at your essence and what you are creating for your life and stop giving your power away to anyone else, regardless of if it's your education, your parents, your system, your religion, whatever it is, start asking your own questions and wondering, why do I believe X, Y, and Z? Is this something that I, that I inherited? Or is this something that I actually firmly believe because it came to me and me alone and not someone attached outside of me? So when, when I saw the world from, I want to bring this back, when I saw the world from this outside perspective, the destruction was coming from beliefs. Like it was people's beliefs that are destroying the planet. It's not even the actions that a lot of people are taking. It's their beliefs because they they get stuck in their belief system so much that that's what causes war. That's what causes disharmony. It's not the actions because the actions would never take place if people didn't have the beliefs first, right? And so it was just like this profound moment of seeing like what people are thinking is literally what they're creating because that's typically the first thing, the first step towards their actions. And when they realize that they have more power than they understand, that when they tap into God, their internal guidance system, like God, again, is just a word, right? It's just a thing that we have to give. We want our, our ego wants to know, but what is God? What is God? And the reality is most people aren't ever going to know until they have their own near-death experience and tap into their, their God source. That was amazing. And I resonated with a lot of what you are talking about because I think it's so hard to conceptualize the true nature of God or what that actually means. And we all have God in us or what you might consider the I am. But mm -hmm. people, I think, try to find purpose in living this life in this three-dimensional reality in this physical body because it is difficult. Like you said, it's a school and a lot of the lessons and tests are really hard. So I think people want to find purpose and know that if I leave this physical body, I'm going to reunite with that I am source. I'm going to reunite with that God source. 
but you're saying it's a little bit more complicated than that because we have the God source in us at all times. And when we transition from this physical reality, we can pretty much go anywhere in the universe and have different sorts of experiences. Is that similar to reincarnation? Because then I always think, what is the point of this physical reality, right? Like, why do we have to be in bodies in order to evolve and in order to grow? It just seems like a lot of hardship and heartbreak sometimes. Well, so that's where it comes back to the fact, this is actually the perfect question because we're here learning because we've destroyed planets, right? We've destroyed other planets and we're, that's so, okay. One of the biggest ways that I like to look at this is we only have God here in this planet because we, we misunderstood the concept of creation. And so it just, it evolved. Man wrote the Bible. Okay. And we as humans change things to our liking. It's we are narcissistic. All of us are to some degree. We want things written the way that we want them written. And people forget that this is passed on time and time again. When you look at the original source that was actually just like written from direct channel, the original source, it is all about energy and creation of energy, nothing more. And then it was passed down time and time again and recreated into what man wanted it to be, right? So there's first, there's that. Second, we all come from different places, like different planets, different originations. Some, some did originate of this earth, right? And the, the thing is, is what comes after that? I don't know. So yes, I'm from another planet, but how did that source originate, right? Like this, I think people, people want to keep the universe so small. The universe is massive. We have no freaking idea how massive this is and what it is. Within the universe, there are all these different galaxies and we're experiencing this physical existence potentially from another physical existence, just like an avatar, the second that they, they get snapped out of that body, they're right back in their physical being. It's no different to that. But then we have to ask the bigger question of, okay, but what comes after that? Like, why, why are we beings on this other planet? And why are we being beings in this galaxy in general? And how many planets are there that are inhabiting these souls and are we reincarnated only back into this planet or do we go to other planets? Like why earth you ask, like why, why be in a physical body? And the reality is when your energy, you don't have to, our souls are involved. We, we we're source energy and that's not the evolution, but being beings on other planets and destroying and being in a physical body, we need to understand these physical beings and to know like, how to operate them because that's what's happening. It's our bodies. And I just talked about this in the podcast the other day about when you have physical or you have ex uh, experimental trauma of some sort, emotional, physical, whatever, that trauma that happened in the event is just an event. The body is what's expressing the emotions, the pain, the frustration, the anger, whatever it is. It's the physical body that's expressing that. Our soul's fine. Our soul's fine and knows like, oh, that was just an experience. Okay, got it. Like now I understand how to work through that. And we keep coming back time and time again in this life because in this earth, I should say, because we're trying to evolve and understand the, the physicality of being because we're not the only physical beings in this world or in this universe, right? There's so many other planets out there and there's so many other systems where we're doing the same thing just to different degrees. And the, the reason I love Avatar so much is because it's showing exactly what we did to earth. Like they go to another planet to try to destroy it. They're tearing it down. They're, you know, destructive. And that is what we did to other planets. And that is what we did to earth. Like it's literally, I have chills. It's no different than what we're experiencing. But people need to stop asking the small question of what happens when we die, because the reality is, even if you go back to your home planet, why are you on this planet? Why are you there? Why are you a part of this, another physical being in general? And why are we living in this life? And where did we come from? That's the bigger question, right? Because the when you look at it from this perspective of we could literally be inside of a Petri dish. We could be a science experiment. The entire universe can be a science experiment, right? 
And we have absolutely no idea where this all stemmed from. There's no way anyone could ever speculate where the original source is coming from because the universe is so big. I mean, we're, we will never be able to explore that, but the universe itself could be this little Petri dish and we're just a speck in it. Do you remember the movie called Horton Hears a Who? No, I, I don't. I need so, to check out all these movies that you're recommending, oh, by the way. Horton Hears a Who is a, a Dr. Seuss movie and it's an animated movie and it's all about this elephant who hears a little tiny voice on a dandelion and on the dandelion is this tiny little speck and on the speck is this world called the who the whoville and these little beings live on a tiny speck inside of a dandelion when we think about the fact that everything gets smaller and smaller and smaller and bigger and bigger and bigger we can literally be a speck on the end of a rope somewhere and we have no idea like when you zoom out, right? Like bacteria, you can't see bacteria, but they have their own reality and they're doing its own thing within our body and everywhere around us. And it's the same. Like when you pull out and, and zoom out from us, we look like tiny little specks when you're in an airplane. You can't even see people. And so we just, there's so much more than people wondering like, oh, what happens when we die? It's so much bigger than that. Like I can only give you experience of, yes, I went home and I got to see earth from an outsider's perspective. And I got to experience one of the things I, on the second time I was on my home planet where we were the majority of our time when we were actually on, on a planet and it was dark. There were no lights. There was no anything because it had been destroyed, but I was surrounded by these other beings and they were very androgynous. A lot of children came up to me and they're like, we miss you. We're so happy to see you. And they're just hugging me. And it was one of the most beautiful experiences. But my my bigger question is, okay, but when I come back from those experiences, but why there? Like, where did we come from on that planet, right? And there's something so much bigger that we're never going to touch. Because did you see the show, The Good Place? Yes, I saw The yes. Good Place, but I haven't finished it though. I, I, oh God, I then I, I'm not going to ruin it for you. It's okay. You can, well- Oh, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Don't the ruin it for me. So profound. The okay. end is exactly the questions that I ask now. Wow. Because it's like this. I, I can't tell you, not if you've seen. I, I have to I have to go back and watch yes. it. Now you, you've you given me the motivation to to finish the show oh because God. I love this stuff. I can geek out on, these, on this stuff all the time because I always had a thousand questions in my mind like what is the true nature of reality that is at the core of a lot of the questions I have because as you were talking I'm thinking also about parallel um realities because you were talking about how you know certain beings they've destroyed their planets and mm -hmm. I think you mentioned what we did to earth and it made me think of this other person I was talking to and he said that there are parallel earths and there was a timeline that mm -hmm. we did destroy earth and that's where a lot of the grays come from they're like humanoids or they used to be humans on on their timeline but then they destroyed earth and now they've shifted into this reality to kind of learn from us so so I was thinking about that too and I was also thinking about you know the whole quantum world which is such a mystery and you know when I think about like quantum physics and all of that stuff where I think about right. Marvel Ant-Man and all of these different things in pop culture that kind of try to answer these questions and people are just looking at it like oh well this is just a movie but mm -hmm. there's some truth it's to it there's there's something there mm -hmm. that we cannot see that we cannot imagine like even on our skin like the different bacteria and the cells and, and the right. world they're living in and, and what that means so it keeps going on and on and on and on but I, I want to ask you about your thoughts on parallel realities and if you are if you buy into that and and how and if you think beings are potentially coming into this reality to kind of undo what they did in their timeline if that makes any sense you know it does and the thing is I did not experience that personally that's not something that I saw but it is something that I always thought about the fact that 
we are always, every single moment is a new choice. And what happens when we're going down to the left, right? Or what happens when we're going down to the right? What reality, like have, there's a movie called Sliding Doors where Gwyneth Paltrow, she takes two different directions. She has two different decisions and she goes one way or the other. And they show both sides, like had she gone this way, this is what would have happened. And so the question I, I like to ask is, maybe there are different realities where we are still living on those other trajectories and make millions of other trajectories, right? Because we're still on, on those paths, just in a different life, like a different reality. Who knows? Like that is a possibility. Um, I like to be open to all the different concepts because I don't know. All I know is what I experience. And I think that the biggest thing that people can do is to remember that they don't know. Like we only, we have experiences and we have ideas and stuff, but the the only thing we know is that we don't know. And I love that because I love that, yes, I got to go home and yes, I got to experience all these things, but I still don't know the bigger, like, what are we? What are our, not even as humans, I'm talking like, what are we in general, right? And how big is the universe actually? And what is outside of the universe? And <laughs> like, what created that? Is there another being that created our own universe? And then they have their own. We're never going to understand yeah, like so much about it. And we just have to be okay with that. Yeah, I, I think you're, you're right. And I'm still an investigator and I'm always trying to get closer and closer and closer to the truth. And you're right. I, I I'm very open to most concepts because we really don't know. We only know based on our experiences. And, and that's why I like to have conversations with people like you, because you have a completely different experience in, in your reality and what you've experienced probably looks so different from mine and how I see the world and how you see the world is different. So us having this conversation it's nice to get an insight into your experiences and what your reality has mm -hmm. looked like. Because the idea of a spaceship, when you talked about when you were 15 and seeing a spaceship, I can't even fathom that. I Like, I literally cannot even fathom that. But oh. it's so cool to hear you talk about it. Because I'm I'm picturing, like, how would I even react to something like that? But I do believe it's true because there's so many people with similar stories of, of, of having these experiences. So did you ever in your experience figure out why you chose the experiences that you've had to experience in this life? Because you've been through so much, you right. lost a lot of your family, you lost your partner and you went through so many different things that were very difficult. So did you, in your experience kind of figure out why would I choose this for myself? What was, what was I supposed to learn in those? Yeah, so it's actually, yeah, it actually doesn't even come down to what was I supposed to learn? It was, I had to remember all of the hardship and to go through all of these things in order to do my teachings that I'm starting to step into. Like I'm barely at the beginning of what I'm working on and I had to do it on a quicker timeline than most people will ever have to navigate in their entire 80 plus years because I had to get to the point where I knew how to share the information that I wanted to share. And it also is because my partner had a very similar, I, I have not met this person yet, but I know that they went through very similar things and I had to catch up. Otherwise we wouldn't be in alignment. If I did not have all of the, the, the tools and the knowledge that I do now, we would not be compatible. And so there are multiple reasons that we have things to do together in this world. And we both needed to be are the best versions of ourselves. And in order to get there, we had to go through a, a slew of things in order to overcome these traumas and understand them from a deeper perspective. And so then that way, we're not just living the same monotonous human life that a lot of people do and following blindly in the media and just playing the game and going to work nine to five and doing all these things that humans have just adapted to. Instead of creating a different reality, I had to learn to get away from that world before I was able to step into my teaching space, which is still even not here yet. And so I, I did, I signed up to do the fast trajectory so I could remember everything that I've ever experienced in lifetimes past. And that's why I don't have any attachment to my past. I don't have any like 
there's nothing that makes me sad about it. The, you know, it's just, it was a matter of fact. It's like, okay, cool. I learned all of this. And now I know, now I can hone in on who I am and teach from a more grounded space. Wow, that's powerful because I think so many people get stuck in their past and we, or they get stuck in the experiences that they have, mm-hmm. which as human beings, yeah. we, it makes sense. We have emotions. We're supposed to feel those things. We're supposed to work through them, mm-hmm. to kind of strengthen our empathy and, and compassion and ability to forgive and probably learn this um, detachment and all that stuff. So it sounds like part of that, it sounds like part of your work here is to elevate consciousness I know it's probably way more than that but in the simplest form would you agree that you're here to elevate consciousness or what do you think you're here to teach yes but it's not in the way a lot of people think nobody is helping anyone else by doing it externally I'm helping this planet and people around me by being me and living in my truth my truth of how I take care of myself and what I do in this world and how I show up. That is the energy that I emanate. That is what heals and helps others tap into their own authenticity and live from their own truth and find their own truth. And I I think a lot of people think like, oh, well, I'm helping all these people by giving them all this information. But the reality is them living in their truth that's going to be the biggest guiding light for people because you can't, the the one thing that I saw that I wish people could grasp, but again, it's not my job to get them to do this, is that you cannot make change by fighting against what you're fighting against. People are always thinking like, well, I can just get this person to see it from my perspective, then everything will be good. The reality is you have your own perspective and they have theirs and you're fighting against the same thing. Just because you think yours is better than theirs doesn't make it right. And it doesn't make it something that you should fight against. Like just live in your truth, be your own light, create your own reality and live from that space and let others choose to follow or not. You're not going to change certain people's minds by fighting against them. That's just not how things change. You evolve in this world by living in your truth and just accepting that some people are going to like you and some people aren't. And some people are going to understand you and some aren't. And that's okay. You don't need to change other people to fit your views in order to be happy in this life, right? And so it's me living in my truth and just sharing whatever it is that I want to share from my experiences, my place, my my being, and just sharing the information and whoever is supposed to find it will. Whoever resonates with it will. And that's all there is to it. I don't need to try to force people into believing my stuff or to understanding who I am or where I've been. It's not my job to change another person. I just need to be an example and lead from that space. Wow. It's so interesting because I spoke with another guy who had a near death experience and he came back with 10 guiding principles for human beings to kind of live their life by not they're not rules they're just more principles to adopt for Mm -hmm. a better life and the first one was about authenticity and he talked about how that was extremely profound and a lot of people are not living in their authentic truth they're not surrounding themselves with people who allow them to be themselves and so it's interesting that you bring this up again, because I'm like, wow, I, authenticity seems to play such a profound role in living life right. And to me, it kind of makes sense because I think a lot of the issues in the world kind of tie back to a lack of love. And I think you need to feel love within yourself and whole within yourself in order to kind of show that out into the world. Like you said, where we help humanity by working on ourselves internally. And I think when you are authentic, if you're able to be authentic, most you most likely figured out the code of self-love and kind of tapping into that I am space. Would you agree? Absolutely. I mean, that's what my journey, I, I was kind of, you can't really say forced on that journey, but that's just what my journey brought me to a lot quicker than most people. And it comes back down to that space of actually tapping into your yourself and what you feel, not believe because of somebody else, right? That's where people, the majority of people are not being authentic because they're following 
the systems that our world has created, right? I don't follow in any of those. I don't play any of the games that are be being played here on earth because they're, they're destructive. You're playing games that are external of yourself and not just creating your own reality. Your own reality is your earth and what you choose to see in this world. You are vibration. You are energy. There is no getting around that. It's not even a woo-woo thing. It is scientific that we are energy. And what we are emanating is what we attract, right? And so when you can just like be in on yourself and, and understand who you are and what you want to experience in this life, that is what you start attracting. And there's so much fear in this world and people live in these fearful ideas and these beliefs. And that is that is what they're putting out. And that is what they're like attracting more of because they're just staying stuck in this. Love is the ultimate word that humans created for this energy source that is so profound. And if people understood that the only thing that goes against love is judgment and and discrimination of any kind against either its people or ideas or anything, that is fear. It doesn't matter what someone else believes. If you try to go against that, that is fear, right? Just acceptance of that everyone has their own embodiment of energy, that is love. And there is no right way or wrong way to live this life. It's it's all about living from a place of brightness and lightness if you that is what love is love is light when you feel that beautiful sensation of lightness and you just feel like you did something really amazing for somebody or the the best way that I can describe it is if you like dogs and you just got to like pet your dog and they just gave you like the biggest kiss and you just feel that love from them that genuine just like unconditional love from them and you experience that sensation from them that is like the beacon of light that you can choose to carry through this world too, right? And people tend to escape back into their fears because that's what they were taught. And that is where things get detrimental to society because fear is just a mentality. It comes back down to fear is hell, right? And love is heaven. Those are the best words that I could describe if we, were, if we wanted to put context to heaven and hell, it'd be love and fear. That's good. Um, my theology set teacher said that heaven is on earth and it's between our ears hmm. starts from there. And I was so confused because I was in high school and I was like, what wow. are you talking about? Um, but yes, heaven is love. But I, I do want to ask one final question because, you know, I know we talk about the paradigm of fear and what fear is but there it's true that there are things in this world that incite fear like if we go to a grocery store and someone brings out a gun and starts shooting um is there a space for non-judgment but also holding people accountable for their actions right because when we talk about love I think people think well if this person is hurting me and this person continues to hurt and oppress people how do I love them but they also need to be held accountable there needs to be some level of justice or standing up for people who are being oppressed or abused etc well this all comes back to remembering that you're not the only I, I don't like the word victim in that situation because no one's a victim in the realm of how they move forward, right? You can be a victim of a circumstance, but past that point, you're the one that chooses to remain in that victim mentality or not, right? But in that moment, it is important to remember how this is where love comes from. And it's one of the most powerful things that I've ever recognized. Think about how much that person is hurting and how much, regardless of if it's physical, emotional, whatever trauma they experienced or their physical ailments that are causing them to get to that point where they are hurting other people. Hurt people hurt people. That is the number one thing that anyone ever needs to remember. And when you can have compassion for that person, that is what people need, right? People like that, they need more First off, I mean, this goes two ways for me because one, they need more compassion because they're hurting. They are in some form of pain that they can't look outside of, 
And that's why they're doing what they're doing, right? And the help that they need is often not the help that they get. They need help to understand why they have a chemical imbalance. These people have chemical imbalances that are happening and they're not getting the help they need. And I'm not talking about going and getting a drug prescription. We talked about on the other podcast, like the importance of understanding our functional body and why these things are happening. There is an imbalance happening that is actually causing their brain to say, this is okay. And they need the help in actually learning like, oh, I don't have to feel this way. I don't have to get to the point where I'm doing this. And we talk, I don't know if I talked to you about this, but the reality is there is actually even a genetic marker and it's called the MAU gene. It's monooxamine um, A, the A gene. And one of, I want to make sure it's, I think it's the A gene that I'm thinking of, but this gene, it's, it causes aggression so intensely in humans that have this genetic mutation. And there are multiple forms of genetic mutations within this specific gene. And they, you, they call it the warrior gene. Because it was thought to be that warriors back in the day, they needed this mentality in order to go in and fight these wars. And now it's linked to the killer gene because the majority of the population in prison, they have this gene. They have this genetic mutation. And they took it to the point at one time in society where in court, you can actually have your sentence lessened if you have this genetic mutation. Are people taught how to navigate this genetic mutation? No, they're just taught you have this, deal with it, right? There are antidepressants that can help with it. So sure, if if you wanna go the medication route, then do that even, right? Like if you don't wanna get to the root cause of it, take care of it through medication then because that changes the expression drastically. And so when we think about the fact that we have these things within our body that are setting us off, people don't just wake up one day and, oh yeah, you know what, today I think I want to go shoot somebody. It's not like they're just like happy-go-lucky to go do this. There is something wrong in their system. I was an irritable person. I was aggressive when I was a child. I see what it's like to have this aggression where I remember beating this little boy up because he took my dad's hat, right? And I was like 10, 11 years old. And I was literally like pounding him into rocks. Like I had this aggressive nature as a child and I have that genetic mutation. Now it expresses differently in women and men. And so for, for myself, I was able to navigate it and it expresses more as depression for me, but in guys who have the double, who have like a certain mutation in it, it immediately, immediately triggers a response that leads to, I want to kill this person. Right. So you, when you step back and you realize that everyone that do that does these instances, there is an element. It's not just their na- nature. It's an element that is causing them to do this. And when we can be more compassionate towards that and understand that, we can look at it from a completely different perspective. Thank you, Lynn. This was such an amazing conversation. And I'd like to close it out with a fun question, which is, Have you shifted your perspective on anything recently? And it could be as lighthearted as I used to hate chocolate mint ice cream and now I love it, or it could be as deep as you want it to be. So, I mean, my perspectives are always come from internal. So my, I don't tend to switch like the big things, but the small things, I actually switched perspectives on the keto diet recently. And it's because I, as a nutritionist, there are so many fad diets coming in and out that I was just like, oh, here comes another fad diet. And I eventually started diving into the research and it was like, oh my God, this actually makes a lot of sense. And when I started the keto diet, it's just like the things that changed in my life were mind blowing. And I was like, wow, who would have thought that it's not just a fad diet. And I think that's why I love it. But yes, I did. I did shift perspectives on that. Awesome. Thank you so much for stopping by the show. Where can people find you if they want to connect with you? Yeah. So my website is www.lynnrivers.com and that's L-I-N-N rivers.com. 